right, guys. Good morning. Let's get into GDX and GDXY. All right, what transpired? Oh, a side note. I didn't have Bitcoin up when I was doing, but it looks like we're up, well, 68 to 70, which is around what we moved up to close at. And it looks like it hit a high of 69. So I think we'll see what Trump's talk tomorrow is and see how that goes. But I'm pretty optimistic uh, on the initial move up in Bitcoin. Um, so here we are with gold and precious metals. So what did they do? Well, GDX was up 0.8 less than a percent from 36.19 to 36.48. And we were up 0.44, so didn't quite do as well. Um, but we had already rolled out of all of our options, right? All of our weeklies. So we didn't have that issue hanging over us. So let's go look at the current weeklies. So we are only, though, $1, 102 away, which is 2.8%. Again, unless we have some impetus, the metals are kind of muted last night. I told you last week I wasn't expecting much. Once I saw Newmont have a fantastic earning and the market kind of said, ho-hum, right? We don't care about the miners. And, and until we break that... And we had been doing about a month's worth of moving up with the miners compared to the metal. And that was the first month in a couple of years that we had performed like that, which is a sign that the miners want to lead the metals. But now the metals appear muted. Um, so I think it's going to take a little more time. I would say sometime in August and for sure in September when we get a market direction, which I'm kind of leaning toward a bearish move in the indexes. I think we're going to rally a little in the S&P and in the NASDAQ, you know, the next couple of weeks. But I have a feeling when the big volume, remember all this summer, the volume has been very minor, not typical. So when you move up like we have throughout the summer and you've already seen the shifting from the large cap, the mega cap, right? The mag seven. And now you're seeing the movement in the Russell. It looks like the Russell's got about another 10% in its gas tank to move up. But then I think we could be in trouble on both indexes for a while. And I think September will be the real decider on which way we're going to move because all that money, summer's over, all the institutions' money is back in the market participating. So I think the markets now, if Bitcoin starts its run, I, I think Bitcoin within two months is very likely, as long as it stays above 63 thousand it's a strong indicator that it's just consolidating and buying its time and i kind of feel the same way with gold i said maybe a little lower at 23 silver is mid 27 i think i could see silver maybe hitting 26 which probably a year from now people will be looking back and saying silver's 50 dollars. why didn't i buy more when it was 26 or why didn't I buy a miner that mined silver, right? So that's the situation. Um, in general, commodities have been beaten down, right? Look at your agriculture products. I got, I, actually, I should show you guys that. Kind of an interesting article. Look at this. I think it's worthwhile talking about. You guys that just want to see the end, go ahead. But here's something that... Wednesday morning, John Deere, right, just a couple of days ago, issued the following statement. As the largest global manufacturer of agriculture equipment, 
John Deere, like many others in our industry, faces significant economic challenges. Rising operational and manufacturing costs and reduce customer demand, including a 20% decline in sales from 23 to 24. This reduction is product demand and increased operational costs, inflation, have unfortunately forced us to make tough decisions, including layoffs at John Deere production facilities and reductions in our global salaried workforce. Deere has already laid off nearly 1,500 employees this year, and that statement is the precursor to another round of layoffs that will lower headcount by 15%. That's approximately 9,000 jobs. Part of the reason for the layoffs is that John Deere is moving some of its manufacturing capacity to Mexico. I wonder why. I think it's a lot cheaper there for wages. Deere isn't the only company looking to cut costs by nearshoring manufacturing to Mexico. Virtually every car maker is doing the same thing. iPhone assembly company Foxconn, toy maker Mattel, and medical device maker Medtronic are all making moves in Mexico. But at a time when there's a surge for U.S.-based manufacturing, Deere's move is ticking some people off. One employee said, the only reason for Deere to do this is greed. You could certainly argue greed after all. Deere had more than $10 billion in net profit for 2023 and also spent $7.2 billion on share buybacks last year. Look at the recovery of their chart. Go look at a chart in 2020. Deer was back to $100. It's gone to $400. I think the chart currently is around $350. I don't have it up. So the article goes on, and this is more of what I'm talking to you about that ultimately is going to kick gold and the commodities into gear. Bitcoin, a store of wealth, gold, a store of wealth, and just pure commodities, things that people need that they can't print. The last few years have been pretty good good for deer. Post-pandemic 2021 revenue was up 24% to $44 billion and grew another 20% in 2022 to 50. Last year, revenue hit a record $600 billion. So the stock's been up more than a triple since the bottom in March of 2020 of COVID. But 2024 revenue is forecast to fall to 45 billion and down to 44 billion next year. That's a massive decline. It helps to explain why the company is panicking a little bit. Picks and shovels and tractors. So after trashing Google's AI business plan yesterday, I thought I'd offer some ideas on companies that have a clearer path to monetizing AI by making their products more useful, so-called picks and shovels. So this article goes and talks about some other things, but otherwise it's a basis of reality. This is also important. Here's the, the, uh, the deer chart. Uh, I may have said caterpillar, but I meant deer if I said that. Here's their move up from 100 in the 2020 low and then up to, you know, over 400, almost to 450 here. So they're saying, hey, it'd be a good buy if it moves back to 300. So my point is the problem. So one of their problems is that corn prices have fallen from nearly $8 a bushel in 2022 to around $4 a bushel today. Soybean prices have fallen from 17 to just under 11. So when you go, and then it says, I'm going to skip any comments about inflation for now, like why are a hint of lime chips still 550 a bag when corn prices are in the tank? Because I already know the answer, right? By the end of 2023, Frito-Lay owner Pepsi had hiked prices by double digits for seven straight quarters, far surpassing rises for its cost. The point for deer is that farmers are taking a massive hit on their income and they can't afford to buy these cool new tractors that you drive with an app on your phone. So weak pricing for farmers expected to continue to 2025. 
So what eventually happens in all stagflationary environments, which we've clearly been in, is inflation turns and runs. We may get rate cuts, right? But the reality is that's not really what will stall inflation. That will actually cause more inflation. But the government is in such a debt position that they're seeing that the high rates are killing their debt, right? So this massive percentage of GDP is going to pay off debt because they've hiked four and a half basis points in the last couple of years. So there's pressure to lower it to make their payments ease. But the reality is it's the last thing that inflation needs and we'll end up in the latter half of this decade with very high inflation. So these commodities will outperform because at the end of the day, what happens when farmers say, well, I can't make enough money, right? I'm not gonna plant so much. And then you start to get shortages. So if you look at commodities over cycles, forever in history, there's a boom and there's a bust. Right, the boom is when they're raising prices and everything's going great, and then all of a sudden, all of these new acres and all of this new comes on board, and then you get a surplus of food. Right, so then what happens in price? That plummet. So it's nothing new here, but you can capitalize on this whole commodity move. I'm trying to look through some other sectors and do a few videos for you guys on what sector, since I know the metals so well and know that they're moving into their sector cycle, that's why I've suggested it's a good place. But don't expect, you know, the $18 GDXY to be 30 tomorrow. But listen, when it starts to run, it will be multi-years, right? It may run to 30 just like an NVIDI and pull back to 22 and run to 30, you know, what it's gonna do but it will have gusto behind it. So hopefully we see some more commodities. We may not see them yet in Yilmax, but we'll see them in some of the other funds. All right, guys, so that's what I got. Let me finish reporting. Nothing really earth shaking here um, in holdings. I covered that for you. Uh, 1840 versus 1842, I think I mentioned this. We're coming back, we moved up, we had this 38 and 39 run in GDX, but we were capped. So it hurt our money, right? The fund managers didn't see it coming. And now we're gaining some, but I'm kind of muted on metals until they wake up again. It could be a week or two or our end of the second week of August. Um, so let's go look at payout. So in payout, you know, we're struggling to get the money here. Will we get a 40 cent payout? Sure. But I'd like to see us do, do better, but it's not looking terrific right now, to be honest. But at least we're not suffering huge NAV reduction either. It's just to look at everything. Look at all of your mag seven, right? The money's kind of flowing. As I told people, it would move into the rest of the S&P 500 and even the Russell. But I have a sneaky feeling when the Russell finishes topping here in the next 10, it's only got about 10% left in its upside, then all of it sort of retraces. Now, the, the Magnificent Seven and the big cap, it, we're gonna bounce on the S&P. It's just that I think more money is gonna go in the other 493 and into the Russell then goes back, but I would look for a bounce in anything in video or some of that, but I also wouldn't be surprised in September to see NVIDIA back to, or NVIDIA go to $95. So just giving you some of the things that I'm seeing out there and we'll keep updating because things change. Okay, guys, that's what I got for you now. Um, again, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye for now.